Thanks to Brilliant.org for sponsoring today's video. More about them in a bit. I am a math teacher, and as a math teacher, I am sworn to love, protect, and uphold Pi Day. I love Pi Day. I don't get the backlash. I think celebrating mathematical constants is awesome. And so for this year's Pi Day, I have for you a Pi themed Sudoku puzzle. I know, I'm excited too. You can see a Sudoku puzzle here, uh, over here. The clues in the puzzle are the digits of Pi in order, kind of spiraling around to the right. 3.14159265355. Five minutes later. Now, before we go any further, puzzle spiraling Spoiler alert, I am going to solve the puzzle, or I guess I should say try to solve this puzzle in the video. So I am going to be doing the puzzle. I will be giving the solution to the puzzle. Sometimes commenters complain. If you'd like to try the puzzle yourself though, I will put a link to the puzzle using my favorite Sudoku app, the one that I'm using right now, Good Sudoku, and you can click on that link and you can play it yourself before watching the video, but make sure to come back and watch the video. One of the reasons why I love this is it has this auto notation feature. So of course the way that Sudoku works, any three by three little bit of this grid is supposed to be the digits one through nine, any row is supposed to be the digits one through nine, and any column, we use those same digits one through nine, but only once, right? And so as we look into any little three by three box, into the rows and into the columns, any number that's already been used can't be used elsewhere in that house, row, or column. Good Sudoku has just saved me a ton of time. This is not like an ad read or anything. I'm just saying, I love this app. They have just saved me a ton of time and they've done that notating for me. And one thing that shows me is that means there are certain cells that I already know have to be a particular number. This cell up here can't be any digit other than seven and so I'm gonna be able to type in seven right now. Now, as I do that, I notice this cell up here can only be a four or a seven. And so once I type in seven here, this cell can only be a four and the good Sudoku app is going to automatically fill that in for me. So let's go ahead and do that. I think actually looking at it, yeah, we were able to get that whole three by three block just from knowing that that was a seven. And then it automatically updated our notes on the rest of the puzzle. So I can see here now that that cell right next to that seven has to be a two and I can fill that in. And then a little bit further over here, that cell has to be a nine. And so the first thing I'm doing is just looking throughout the puzzle. Do I see any other places where it can be just one number? I don't, I think that's it there. The next thing that I would usually do is look for particular numbers and see, well, is that the only place in a house, in a row, in a column that that number can be? And again, good Sudoku will highlight this for me. So all the cells you see here in white could be ones, though I don't see any particular cell where it's the only one in a row, a house, or a column that has to be a one. So I'm just gonna kind of move along here, not noticing anything. Ah, okay. So pretty limited on threes. That cell has to be a three. And in fact, that's it for the threes. We've found all the threes in the puzzle. Let's see, fours, I'm not seeing any singles, fives, sixes, maybe there are no, oh, I spoke too soon, okay. We've got this cell down here. Again, it's the only cell in its house that can be an eight. So it must be an eight, but again, for the rest, and then maybe a quick look through here again, I'm not seeing anything. What I'm gonna do now is look for any cells where there are only two possibilities. That's the next best thing from only one possibility, right? And I'm just gonna highlight, okay, so those cells have to be a four or a six. That has to be a one or a five, one or a seven. And I'm just gonna go through the puzzle and everywhere I see just the two possibilities, I'm just gonna make that a little more obvious by putting it in this little kind of blue notation. Um, interestingly, I can see a couple places now where I have that four, six pairing. Uh, I've got seven, eight there. All right, and as I'm doing this, I do notice if I look down this second column here, I've got three cells that have to be a two, a six, or a seven. And that means that if I've got three cells and just three digits, those are the only three cells that can be a two, a six, or a seven. And so this other cell is gonna have to be a five because otherwise, I would end up with not enough space for the twos, sixes, and sevens. And with that five filled in, let's just quickly check. Yeah, there are now some other places that we know have to be fives, because for example, this cell is now the only cell left in its house that can be a five. But then I end up with these four cells that can be fives, and unfortunately, that's not enough information to pick one for sure. So I'm just gonna have to leave those alone. Those could be fives, but I just don't know which ones. But then that does give me a couple other cells now with just two options. Got another cell now that has to be a 
a seven or a nine. Ooh, and this is interesting. Since these two cells have to be either the seven or the nine, nothing else in that little three by three grid can be the seven or the nine. So this cell here can't be the seven, and obviously that leaves only the one. And then same kind of logic. One of those two has to be the two or the eight, which means nothing else in that row can be the two or the eight. So that tells me that's going to be a seven. And then that gives me a couple more where I can highlight just two at a time. Way over here, got a two and a seven there. And I'm just going to periodically check each number to see if maybe I'm missing something that is alone in a row, a column, or a house. Though I'm not seeing anything right now. Now we can say in the same way that this two eight meant this cell up here had to be a seven because nothing else in that column could be a two or an eight. Nothing else in this house can be a two or an eight either. So that lets us get rid of an eight from that upper left hand corner, which again means it can only be a four or a six. And again, I notice, okay, four, six here, four, six here, nothing else in that row can be a four or a six. And so that only leaves a one for that cell. And then that narrows down another four, six pair. Interesting, so I've got a lot of cells that are paired possibilities for fours and sixes. Like I can see all these different cells that have to switch between four fours and sixes. Now, when that happens, it's tempting to say, well, let's just guess, right? But one thing I've learned about Sudoku puzzles is you never have to guess. Every single step you take should be a logical deduction within the context of the rules of the puzzle. And personally, I really enjoy that challenge of pushing my logical abilities to the limit. And that's why I'm so happy to have Brilliant.org as a sponsor for today's video. Brilliant has built an amazing platform for helping people develop the kinds of logical faculties that would be necessary to solve this Pi Day Sudoku puzzle. Brilliant.org helps you learn logic, mathematics, and science interactively, though that really only scratches the surface of what you can accomplish on the Brilliant platform. Brilliant has thousands of lessons available not only for logic, but also for math, statistics, neural networks, data science, AI, the list goes on and on, and they're adding more lessons every month. Let's look at what's available for logic, for example. We'll do logic one here. Oh, puzzles and riddles and some process of elimination. Process of elimination is a key skill. We've been using it on the Sudoku puzzle as we've eliminated possibilities as we go. And you've got this great lesson here that you can go through on brilliant.org right now if you sign up. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for the next 30 days. All you have to do is type in the link here or click on the link in the description, brilliant.org slash polymathematic. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Whether you're a student going through it for the first time or a lifelong learner trying to master new skills, I think Brilliant's platform can help you and I hope you'll take advantage. Thank you again to brilliant.org for sponsoring today's video. All right, back to the puzzle. I don't wanna guess on the fours and sixes so we're gonna move off of the fours and sixes for now. Well, not quite yet, I do notice something. So when I pull up my possibilities for sixes, I can see these two cells and again, two cells, it almost looks like the pairings for the fives, but the difference is in the pairings for the fives, that's it for the fives. There are no other possibilities. But for the sixes, there's still a lot of other possibilities. And so I wanna be able to start eliminating some of those possibilities. If I have these four cells, I need the sixes to alternate there. Nothing else on those rows and columns can be sixes, otherwise it would cause a problem with those four corners. And so I can say neither of these two cells in the same rows can actually be sixes. This cell over here can't actually be a six. Again, I need to clear away anything on the same row or column with those four sixes. I think that might be it. That does give me another pairing there. That's either a four or an eight over here. I don't know if I missed this one earlier, but that's a two or a seven. In fact, speaking of sevens, yeah, I can see these two cells have to be a seven in that house. And so nothing else on that column could possibly be a seven because it would mess that up otherwise. Feels like I should be able to do the same thing for eight, but I don't think I can. And again, sixes, I'm not noticing anything else there. Fives, fours, threes are done, twos, ones. Oh wait, I've got that same kind of setup, those four cells 
two of which are gonna have to be a one. So nothing else on those rows can be a one. Nothing else over here can be a one. And that gives me this cell has to be a nine. Tell me anything else about the nines. Okay, it does. So I can see one of these two is gonna have to be a nine. And so that means that this one up here can't be a nine. So then that leaves only one cell in that house that could be a nine. Gives me a couple other places with just two possibilities. So I'll fill those in. Okay, I do do notice something else here as I look across this row I can see I've got that triplet kind of thing we noticed earlier one two and eight have to fill up those three cells so nothing else in that row can be a one a two or an eight so we can eliminate that and that leaves us with more fours and sixes more fours and sixes really want to guess on the fours and sixes but I'm gonna try and hold off and similarly, in this house here, I've got those two cells that have to be fours or sixes. So this cell over here, it can't possibly be fours and sixes. It means it has to be a one or a seven. Got that kind of triplet thing going on again. But I'm not necessarily, oh, I've got it again, one, two, seven. So this can't possibly be a two. And that only leaves more fours and sixes. But I still don't know what the coin flip is. I don't know which one is which. And again, we'll cycle through here. Do we see anything new when we look into individual numbers? Anything that has to be a particular way? All oh, those fours and sixes. Gosh, I wish we knew what those were. All right, I am noticing something weird here. So if you take a look in this kind of bottom middle row, we've got these two cells, one of which has to be a seven, one of which has to be a nine. So we know that already. But, you, oh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. But you can see that that kind of flip-flops with these other two cells, one of those two, has to be a nine. So what that means is there's no way those two cells could also flip-flop the seven because then this puzzle would have two unique solutions. You know, you could imagine where this is a seven and that makes that a nine, that makes that a seven and that makes this a nine. But if these were flip-flopping, you could just as easily have it the other way around. And since these cells don't affect any other cells, that would be two unique solutions to the puzzle. And that's not okay. So there's no way that these two are sevens. And what does that mean about my sevens? I mean, it does get me another double. So that's either a two or a nine. Mmm, and then my favorite, the most delicious technique of all, the Y wing. So take a look at these three cells. They're all some combination of two, seven, and nine. But this particular cell sees both of the other two. That is, it's affected by both of the other two. So if there was something for these two cells that was preventing them from being sevens, this one up here would have to be a nine, this would have to be a two, and then this cell would have nothing to be. And so it can't be the case that anything that sees these two cells is a seven, because then that would result in an impossibility. For example, this cell down here can't be a seven, so it has to be a nine. And then does that? Yeah, so this cell over here has to be a nine, and then down here I've got two cells, both of which have to be either the one or the two, so this cell over here can't be the two, it's gotta be a seven, and I think we've cracked it. That means this has to be an eight, and that gets us one of those four, six pairings that we can use all across the rest of the puzzle, and it's just filling in, filling in, filling in. There we have it. All right, very nice. Pretty difficult puzzle, according to Good Sudoku. Okay, 3.3 difficulty. I have no idea what the score means, but 110,000 points. We did it! So there you have it, a Pi Day Sudoku. Again, if you want to play this yourself, you can click the link down in the description. If you've already seen the solution, I'd still encourage you to try it yourself, maybe review some of the techniques if you want to get into Sudoku puzzles. I am an amateur at best, but I hope that you have enjoyed that as we celebrate Pi Day 2023. And again, Thank you to Brilliant.org for sponsoring today's video. I've got the link here. If you're interested in learning more about math, science, logic, anything like that, I strongly recommend checking out their platform. And if you go to Brilliant.org slash Polymathematic, you can get 20% off, or at least the first 200 of you can get 20% off a full annual premium subscription. So please check that out. Enjoy your Pi Day celebrations, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.